Hello, we are live. Welcome to another edition of FFF, the FFS even, the Friday Facebook session, or for fuck's sake, because it's all going wrong. Uh, we're a bit late, we're a bit rushed, I've got no idea what we're doing. Um, hello, welcome, Simon Daly, what's your name, where'd you come from? Hello, I am Simon Daly and I'm from Grow Traffic. I'm from Trawley. Born in Preston, if you, if you want to know specifically where I'm from, I live in Bakeup, which is in East Lancashire in, in the UK. That's where I'm yeah. from. Wow, very, very specific there, very detailed answer. You know me, uh, well, I'm very pedantic. Yeah. Okay, well, my name is Rachel Weinhold, born in London, uh, lived all over the place, but most of the time in Lancashire, uh, West Lancashire, and now from East Lancashire. Yes, Simon Daly. Um, London is a very broad term, isn't it? Are you sure that you actually were born in London? I was born in the Mother's Hospital in Hackney, in, yeah, East London. So, yes, I'm quite Thank sure you. I was. I was born within my, my... the sound of the Bow Bells. I am officially a Cockney. A little pedant brain is now satisfied. All right, good. Well, there we go. Well, now we've got that out of the way. What are we here to talk <laughs> about today, Simon Daly? Um, you tell me, Roa, you're hosting this. Okay, we are here to talk about local SEO. Now, the reason we are talking about local SEO is because I have a feeling we did one of these about local SEO uh, a few years ago, but I was looking back through the videos and I couldn't find it. And the reason I was looking back was because I was at a networking event and one of my friends asked me, she said, what on earth is local SEO? Why do I keep hearing about it? What's the difference between local SEO and normal SEO? So we're going to talk about what is it? Who is it for? And then how do you do it? So first up, Simon Daly, what what is local SEO and why is it different from normal SEO? OK, so, um, so funnily enough, I, I normally talk about the three strands of, of SEO and think about, about SEO as like a, a tripod or a pyramid or a triumvirate. Or a triumvirate. A triumvirate. I, I believe I do often say that. Well, <laughs> recently, like. It was literally last week. I read something. And somebody was talking about the four pillars of, of SEO, and the fourth pillar that they talked about was local SEO. And, and I kind of thought about it. I thought, yeah, kind of, because local SEO is quite a distinct thing. It's its, its own kind of beast, really. So, what is local SEO? So, traditionally, um, SEO is about increasing the presence of your website in the organic listings on Google. So that's like the top 10 on the first page, for example, um, of those those kind of organic listings. Um, and and that, that was great when, when Google first came out, but then things became a lot more competitive, um, a lot more uh, businesses started to appear on Google. And, and Google also worked out that the way that people were using the, the uh, the so their search engine was to, to try and find people, uh, try and find businesses that were close to them. The advent of the smartphone made this um, even more prominent with the ability to have local maps um, and in your in your pocket, basically. So they introduced Google Maps um, in the late noughties, and then from there we kind of got got kind of local seo starting to develop so it's mm. it's all about finding businesses that are kind of local to to you and google um so, so it doesn't matter where you kind of uh where you rank on google because google automatically applies a little bit of localization to the results that you see so whereas it used to historically be one SERP one index across the whole of the UK. Now there's something like 1,700 different variants. And that's just the one to 10. The next thing also is about the maps listings, where you get your business featured on maps. You've got your Google My Business business profile. Um, and this is used for things like sat-navs, for example, or for the map pack that features at the top of Google's search results. So it, it comes before those 10, 10 results. So it's, it's really important that you consider how to use it. Um, and it will be beneficial to you if you're a local okay. business. 
Yes. Okay. So I'm going to distill some of what you just said then for so that other people can understand it. So when we're looking at it in the sort of essence, SEO, traditional SEO was that you would rank, you know, you did your SEO and you would rank one, number one, two or three in the search engine results pages. And that didn't matter where anybody was. So if somebody was looking in, in London or somebody was looking in Manchester, you would come up first because you'd optimized for that specific keyword. So you would show for it. What local SEO is, is thinking on a much more, you know, and if you are just a local business, you know, you don't necessarily want people in London to be finding you because if you're a gardener, for example, it's not worth your time to go and drive all the way down to London to do somebody's garden so it wasn't necessarily useful for every business so if we're thinking about it from the business point of view and who is local seo for local seo is primarily for those businesses that work within a very specific geographical region and what you are doing instead of saying i want to rank number one on google for that keyword for everywhere you're saying i want to rank number one on google for that keyword but only for people who are you know within the distance that i am willing to travel in order to provide my products or services to, to my customers so it's a it's it's a, it's the same sort of principle it's the same sort of process you're trying to game the algorithms and get your, your website visible on the search engines but you you're focusing on different things and these are the things that we're going to come to talk about things that you just mentioned you google my business you google maps you know it, it's about localizing that thing I just want to talk quickly about um, sort of so uh, you know how, uh, give me some examples, Dali, if you can, about uh, the types of businesses that this would be particularly relevant to local SEO as opposed to national or international. Um, okay, uh, so for example, um, okay, so a, an example of a a business where local SEO, um, say plumbers. You know, somebody most who actually, tradesmen, isn't it? Yeah, most most tradespeople uh, where they are physically have to get out and go and, and visit somebody's house, or mm -hmm. maybe maybe some somewhere where you um, places where you actually have to go to a physical shop, maybe or or something like that. That's local. To you. Um, yeah, so, so there's different the, types of business. So it's, it's it's the sort of trades businesses, th uh, some service businesses as well, you know, uh, solicitors, for example, generally, you don't want to, you're not bothered about customers from 300 miles away, you generally want to work with people in your local area. So solicitors, maybe HR providers, that sort of thing, the, the, the sort of what what becomes uh, tricky, let's say, or not tricky, what complicates the situation then is when you have a lot of local businesses. So when this becomes quite complex for certain businesses, say if you are a franchise business, maybe, or you have a lot of branches. So if you are like a hire company, so you do, you know, you hire out heavy plant machinery or that sort of thing, you know, people are only going to travel a certain mile, uh, small mileage in order to go to pick up the belt sander that they want to borrow for that weekend but you might have belt sander hire shops up and down the country so you want to do local seo for each one of those specific premises but as a national company with a national presence you might still want to do traditional seo so there's very much this it's not like uh, you know what but some businesses are going to be local only and some businesses are going to be national only there are certainly some businesses that cross that divide aren't there and, and need yeah I, th I think your banks are Sorry, Rachel. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, go, go, carry on. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, a bank's a good example of a business that is both kind of local in some ways and, and then national in a lot of others. So you could think that um, locally you, you, you want the local contact details of the local branch. You know, if you want to go in to physically deposit money into a, into a bank, you're going to, you know, you need, you probably need to go into a local branch. You're going to want to see the opening times for it, where it is. You might want a telephone number for that branch. However, if you want a mortgage or you want a loan or you just want to log into your internet banking, you don't need the, um, you don't need the, the local branch information. You need the information from the national branch, um, the national headquarters website. Mm. And this is exactly where it becomes complicated because some businesses are going to need one or the other. Some businesses are going to need both and some businesses are going to need different types. So that bank example actually is a really good example because you're right. Different people are going to use the two 
types, the two the two business options for different things. So if you just want sort of information on can I get a loan or um, you know uh, certain certain information on uh, opening a child savings account, for example, you might just want to do that online. In which case, you're going to need some good national SEO to make sure that that type of useful content for people is appearing in search engines. But if you are somebody who's in your car and you've got a check and you need to pay it into a branch and you want to know where your closest bank branches, then they are going to need local SEO. So again, there's a lot in, that comes in in terms of user intent, uh, you know, customer services, products, different things that are going to determine which one you're going to want for for for, for which, which customer. So if we think then when we're talking about local SEO, a lot of our local SEO customers, they do tend to be the sort of the tradesmen, um, like I say, people who maybe a nutritionalist, health coaches, uh, opticians, trainers, yeah, opticians, um, yeah, yeah, photographers, opticians. yeah, it's those sorts of people that are going to travel within a certain service. So that's who needs local SEO. So let's go through some of the uh, some of the aspects that are going to come in then if you want to start doing SEO, uh, local SEO. So the first place you want to start really is Google My Business, isn't it? Yeah. So Google My Business is a is Google's business profile basically, and every business I would suggest should have one of these, um, irrespective of whether you're doing local SEO or not. You should still have uh, a Google My Business profile. This is where all the information about your your business is is housed. Um, you get to put things like a description of the business, you get to put the services that you offer, open time, telephone number, um, just everything that you you, you uh, might want to use to promote your business goes there. And it's a central point that you can link out to to various different, um, uh, various different platforms and, and channels uh, so that Google can understand that this is like the authoritative kind of official central place. I mean, we have got an episode on Google My Business. So if you if you have specific questions, I don't want us to, to vanish down a Google My Business rabbit hole or GMB, as we call it, GMB rabbit hole. Uh, so, you know, please, if you're interested and you've got questions specifically about that, go and look at that. But essentially, the, the, the real importance of having one of these is that, uh, well, twofold. First of all, a lot of people who are using, like I say, if they're driving around, if they're looking for a business local to them or they're about to set off somewhere and they want to check opening times and stuff, Google, think about how you use the internet. Google My Business is the place you will get that information. I will very rarely go onto a, a, a business's website and hunt through to find out when, when they're going to be open. I go on my maps, I put the business in, and it tells me they'll be open when you get there or they won't. So it's really important from a keeping your customers happy point of view that that information is on there and it's up to date because a lot of people will rely on it. And if I was speaking to somebody the other day who was saying that um, Google Google changed their opening hours without them realizing and they were getting lots of phone calls from people who were really cross because they were saying I came to your shop and it said it was open on Saturdays and, it, and she was saying I've never been open on Saturdays I don't know why it did that so you know keep that information up to date but the other reason is that and one of the reasons that Google sort of started it really is because Google doesn't know if you've got a website and you haven't updated it for a long time you know, Google doesn't know how relevant the information on that website is, whether you're even still in business. You know, they wanted a way of just distilling out the essence of businesses. Essentially, it's the old yellow pages, isn't it? Is that business still there? Is it going? Can we put it on as a as a as an actual physical premises that people can go to and it's on the maps and all the rest of it? So it's a way of Google verifying that you you exist and that you're a proper business. So, again, you know, back to the point of, this might be the only point of contact, the only digital uh, impression of your business that a customer gets before they come and visit you. So put on some good information, have some good photos on there, make sure that all the information is filled in and correct, make sure it shows you in a really good light and gives people impression of, of what your business is gonna be and what they're gonna find when they get there. Anything to add on, on Google My Business, Deli? Uh, no, I'm sure we'll add some more in a minute. Okay, okay. Right, well, the, nap, the next point that you've said that we need to mention is nap consistency. So is this the, where we get to have a little nap at uh, 2 o'clock every day? Well, I mean, if I talk about this for any more than about two minutes, then we will be having a little nap. So, 
I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll say this very quickly. So this kind of relates to Google My Business, but also every other um, incident, if you like, of, of how you're promoting your own business online. NAP stands is, is, is short for name, address, and phone number. So it's about having all the contact details that you use about your business um, consistent across every different platform, all the different websites that you put them on. Um, so really, think about really your own possible. website. Your sorry, think about your own website. Think about the directories. Think about things like social media. All those different places. Are you using the same name for your business? And businesses often have slightly different trading names than their official names. Which one are you going to do? Which one are you going to use? Um, when you're using your address, are you using the same address everywhere? Or I don't know. Sometimes you might. You might add in some addresses. You might add the like the, like the, the village that you're in and the town, um, and other places you might not. And similarly with the phone number, are you um, using the phone number in the same format? Some people will put things like the international dial tone on there. Some people will change the space in the middle. It's just all about being consistent. Mm. And I mean, that comes down to, uh, you, you're right, people have different names, different trading names, you know, all that. But it also comes down as, as, as granular as how are you writing that? You know, for example, we are Grow Traffic, capital G, capital T, no space. We are limited with a, with a full stop at the end of it. You know, pick a format for how your business will be written and how it will look. If you've got, if you're in like a unit of an industrial estate, you put a comma after the number of your unit and then the name of the industrial estate, or do you say in industrial estate unit three so be consistent pick away and be consistent and one of the reasons for that is if you have multiple different ways of listing yourself of, of saying what your address is and what your business is it could eventually be be considered to be different versions google doesn't know whether that's you know there are, there might be three businesses called grow traffic that work out of the this industrial estate so just be really really consistent in terms of how you put it how you write it and where you write it and make sure you are the same everywhere is there anywhere simon daly that anyone could check this information about, about how they're already represented online should they wish to uh yeah there's plenty of bits of software out there that you can use um we use a piece of software called se ranking and it has a, a local um a local SEO uh, kind of checklist on there. Have you been, you know, are you included in all the uh, most prominent directories that you should be included on? Um, and is it uh, consistent? I think there's, uh, there's Moz, Moz Local. Moz, yeah, Moz, Moz Local, local. Check is, is the, I think that's the best free one because it, it gives it you in a nice pie chart with with nice pretty colors on and it'll say you are listed you know 20 percent is correct and consistent and and you know 60 percent is on is incorrect and whatever the rest is 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 unlisted or whatever so you can really quickly at a glance and, and you can download that and, and save it and then just work your way through it and we'll come on to directories and citations in a minute but um yeah there are quite a lot if you just check type into your google browser or any browser um you know local site local checker or local listings checker or something and you'll find one okay so yeah. uh just one more thing uh the the other yeah. one the other kind of market leader really in this field is bright local um and they um they charge a monthly fee to get you on all the all the directories i think it's actually you make a really good point though it's really important that we we focus on things like that and just mention things like that because um again i was i was talking to a, a friend who had paid yell.com to do this uh, yell.com she had a website through them she was paying them a monthly amount of money they said don't worry you know along with this website you get listings on all of these other business directories citations and and we checked and they were she was there um and then she cancelled her subscription with them because she was it was it was an absolute shit to the money essentially um so she cancelled her subscription and they removed her from those directories. So just be really careful. And I know that uh, Bright Bright Local in the past have done this with, with someone that we knew as well. If you are paying somebody on an active basis to, to 
add you to directories. Just make sure when you cancel that subscription that you are not going to be removed from the directories. When we do it, we charge you by the hour for the act of putting you in there. We don't then have the time or the inclination to go back and, and take you off anything. So just be careful what you're signing up for if you're using these services. Okay, photos and videos are very, very appropriate. Liz has just popped up and said hello, and we're here to talk about locally taken photos and videos. Why is the fact that they are locally taken important, Dolly? Uh, I, so Liz, who is one of our regular um, listeners or, or followers on, on, on these sessions, um, is a photographer, a local photographer to, local to us. And so I included this one intentionally so that <laughs> Oh, she came on just in the right nick of time then. <laughs> so photos are really important um, in terms of how you promote yourself. Uh, they make people understand that you understand the local area and that you're a local business. But also from Google's perspective, there's also a lot of meta information that's stored in digital images um, that relates back to the physical location that they were taken, often the the camera that they were taken with and Google can um, use that meta information to determine are you genuinely a local business and, and if you can provide more of that kind of information in videos in uh, photos then you're more likely to rank locally and I don't know if anyone's seen recently that Google is encouraging you to um, take photographs or, or video your surrounding area so that they understand where you are. Um, and that's all kind of contributing more and more to the, the way that they kind of understand the world. Um, just so if you assume then, you know, that, that you, a, a, a normal business owner who's not a photographer, who's not an SEO expert, you know, we're saying take a, take some pictures locally. So say if we're in Rossendale, someone was up at the Singing Ringing Tree, which is a local landmark, um, and they took a photo of themselves. Maybe they were doing a, a, a walk with a client up by the Singing Ringing Tree. They did that and they put that on their Google My Business. Do they, how do they get that geo metadata on there? Is that automatically included? Did, or do they need to put that in the uh, alt tags or or how do they ensure Google knows that that is that person at the singing ring tree in Rossendale? Yeah, all, lots of this information is is recorded whenever you take whenever you take a photograph, it's adding all this information in. Um, so is that whether you're on a phone or a camera, does it make a difference? Phones, digital cameras, they all do it. They all they all have um, additional metadata in the background that some it depends it depends on the device some is more specific than others you can slightly tweak and change it um so i'm sure somebody like liz would be able to make more alterations on that than than say the standard person with a smartphone um but you know if you're taking a picture in the center of the town that you're trying to target you know you're trying to rank for and you're the only business um in the area that's taken one of those photographs there then then you you're giving yourself a, an advantage over somebody else. So you take a picture of yourself in a town that you want to target, doing hopefully, preferably doing some sort of business-related thing. You then upload it to your Google My Business profile. Would a caption help? Does that is that belt and braces, or does that not make a difference? Um, cat, will you uh, do you upload a caption on Google My Business? I can't think. Uh, I think you can. If there's an opportunity to put a caption on, then absolutely always. Uh, just think of Google My Business like any other page on the internet. You want to optimize it for keywords that you want to rank for. Uh, but, but let's not just think this is about uh, a Google My Business because you can be using these on your website as well. Uh, Google is still reading all that data wherever it is. You know, you could have, that's going to help you in normal search, but also Google image search and you know various other, other ways that it can help. Yeah, I think that's really important as well. You know, we've, we've said it many times before, but we need to keep it, reiterating it that all of these platforms are connected now. The internet is a big, big connected network. And wherever you appear on it, whether you're on social media or somebody's podcast or Google My Business, it doesn't matter. Google knows. So if you if you are uploading images of yourself or your business or whatever, you know, keep that metadata on there. Put more metadata on there if you can. Put a caption on if you can. But make sure it knows that it's 
you and, and it's your connected to your business, all the rest of it, because it all helps create that impression that you are a real person doing real business in a real location and you're active which is the crucial thing, you know, a lot of people don't upload anything for ages. So the algorithms just assume that they've may have gone out of business or whatever. So, you know, the, the ways they can judge these things is still very rudimentary. OK, directories, Dali, number four, directories. What are directories? Um, so so directories are um, they are a place to store information. But, but kind of like you said about the yellow pages, this is what the Internet this, is, this was kind of the way that thing, people found things before search engines existed. Um, you had a directory of content. It was categorized by business type. It was categorized by location. And um, you would search those different directories in order to find businesses local to you. But there are still plenty of local business directories, local directories out there. There is plenty of... of um, industry specific directories out there and these are all additional ways to um go back to what we were saying before about that nap concept of, of consistently distributing your business's name and producing signals back to google that that you are a local business and that you should be ranking locally uh, mm. for your product and service but so if I was a business owner, then I might come to you and say, and you would say, I want you to, I want you to get listed on local directories. We call it citations, don't we, in the business? If I was a business owner, I would go, but but nobody goes to yell.com. Nobody's gonna go on yell.com and look for me, or nobody's gonna go on an industry website, specific website, and look down a list of listings for me. Maybe if they're about to sign a big contract and they want to just double check then, but nobody's gonna find me that way. So if these directories want you know, a, a, a sum of money off me every every year to, to be on their listings. What's the point? Why should I bother? I'm not, nobody finds me that way. I'm not going to bother. So what what would you say then? Well, it's, it's uh, I mean, just because nobody's finds you that way at the moment doesn't mean that they're not going to find you that way in the future. You know, if you're not listed there, then you haven't got a chance of being found that way anyway. Um, and I think that if you are a local business and you're relying on local trade, then you, you you need to do everything that you can do possible in order to uh, give your business a, the best possible chance it has of being found. Well, we're back to that credibility again, aren't we? And, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's credibility from people, but it's also credibility from algorithms. And it, you can go along and say, you know, we're, we're amazing at this, but if you are then not registered with any you know, standards bodies or trading regulators or you're not listed on any website to do with anything from your industry and, you know, you're not anywhere even, you're not even in the, the yell.com or any, you know, somebody will go, well, hang on, this business looks a little bit dodgy. Why aren't they appearing anywhere? So if somebody's going to go digging, you need to be there. But also from an algorithmic point of view, back to that authority thing, you know, Google has very few ways that it can judge whether or not you are a legitimate business operating in, you know, Bake Up, which is hundreds of thousands of miles away from California where Google's based. So it will look at other things around and it will say, do they look like a legitimate business? Are they listed on these places? Are they, you know, have they got photos? Have we got re reviews, which we're going to come on to? All of it helps put together this picture that you are real, doesn't it? So. And so, uh, mentioned it, number five, um, reviews. Everybody's hated words. I hate I hate this. It's so hard to get them. So why why are they important, Dali? Why are we telling people consistently to slog their guts out to get people to review when we all hate being asked to give a review? Um, there's multiple reasons. So um, they they add credibility to 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 um, to you. Google aggregates them all together and you know gives you kind of under uh, score of uh, aggregates them together sorry you can google my my business so they're all pulled together there so you want to, as many as possible because potentially they're going to help you rank a bit higher if you've got more of them uh, and also you just there's more opportunities there to add more keywords about your business into the into the same kind of system um that, that you're trying to rank in does it matter whether people are putting reviews on their website or on their Facebook page or on their Google My Business? Does it matter? Um, Should they pick I mean, one? 
What's you want to get them on Google My Business. You want to get them on Facebook. You want to get them on TripAdvisor. Uh, TripAdvisor or uh, Trustpilot is what I was thinking of. Uh, Google does aggregate the reviews together. The thing that you said before, actually, about somebody saying that their their open times had changed and they hadn't changed them. Um, well, part of the reason for that is that Google doesn't just doesn't just present the information that the users enter in there. It, it, it looks for other data sources and tries to find what other people are saying. And and um, if somebody makes a suggestion and you don't then come back and disagree with that suggestion, it will um, kind of merge things together so that everything's looking consistent from their perspective. That's a really good point, actually. And this, and this again, this is a thing Thank I think you. people. You're very welcome. The thing people misunderstand is that it, it doesn't just take your word for it, because again, every anybody could go on and say, you know, I'm the bestest business in the world, and and here's all. And, and Google will not just accept that. It does. It, you know, it gives you a certain leeway, but it will, as you say, it will look on other places. And this is why it is so important that you are listed consistently, and and that you're also checking consistently. You know, don't just leave it for twelve months and think this is something you can come back to once a year and review. You need to be, you know, set yourself a reminder on your calendar every three months or so. Just go back and check. Is that information still the same? Because somebody could come along and challenge the information you've given and say, that's bollocks. You know, actually, they're open 24 hours all weekend. And yes, it could be a competitor that could come along and make that suggestion just to make your life a bit tricky. Um, and and they, competitors can leave negative reviews and they could get other people to leave negative reviews. It's really important that you keep on top of this so that you are understanding and able to react quickly if any of this you know negativity happens we have got a session coming up on reviews that's one of the things we're going to come back to because we get a lot of questions about it so uh, in a few weeks we'll be coming back to reviews and we will be talking about um, how you go about getting them and uh, you know best things that you can do to encourage people to write them and what you do with them once you've got them so we will come back to that so just to recap and Simon Daly, I'm going to come to you in a minute for your final thoughts. But local SEO, you know, if you are a business that really only operates within a certain area, within a certain distance that you're willing to travel to, or your customers will be willing to travel to you, then local SEO is probably the way that you need to go. Um, and it's uh, the, you start with first place to start is Google My Business. Get your Google My Business card and Bing. Actually, we've talked primarily about Google in this one. Bing is is there now. It's it's coming up on the horizon. So make sure Bing has uh, the Bing version of Google My Business is called Bing Places for Business. So go and get your Bing account and claim your Places for Business card on Bing and make sure you filled in the same information. So have consistency in terms of how you are written how your business name address and phone number is written across the uh, internet pick a format and stick with it religiously no variations no additional commas no additional full stops just stick with that one format Think about videos, uh, photos and videos. Again, your Google My Business card is the place where people are going to probably see your business first. So if you've got some nice photos on there that represent your business, but also make sure that those photos and videos are taken locally because all of that data adds to that impression of where you operate. Uh, number four, get yourself listed in directories preferably local and preferably trade directories so that you appear legitimately. Again, you're just consistently emphasizing that you operate in this one area. And number five is reviews. The more reviews you've got from local people, Google knows where everybody is. So the more reviews from local people you've got who have used you, the more, again, it adds to that picture that you are a business operating here. And that's what every signal on the internet is saying about you. So Simon Daly, what's your final thought on local SEO? Um, I think that as more businesses are listed on Google um, and as technology means that we are thinking more locally again, Google uh, local SEO is, is much more important than it used to be. Um, everybody wants to get the national keywords because there's traffic and volume behind them. However, for a local business, you know, you're more likely to convert customers who are local to you so it makes sense to me to to go after that as well yeah absolutely and I, and for me i think my, if i was going to say one top tip i would say but be, con, 
be you know be consistent about checking in with this data and make sure it's up to date the, the number of times i go to um, a google my business card and it is primarily the way i will check that a business is going to be open when i get there you know it's through my maps i'm in the car i'm, I'm usually already there and if those opening times aren't right if the phone number's not right you know if the basic information isn't right and i get there and i've had a wasted journey i will never again use that business so just keep on top of that data and if there's a bank holiday coming up or if it's going to be the Christmas holidays and you're going to have different operating hours, go and change it, go and change it. And then you can change it back afterwards. So it just is the quickest way people will find you. Make sure it's up to date. That's it. Final question, Dali. Liz asked, Liz asked, she says that she's got one of the top level badges on Google Guides and she wants to know what you are. I don't think I've even checked mine. I've got absolutely no idea. Um. Well, when John Mueller gives me a call, I'll ask him. You'll ask him. Yeah, all right. Well, we shall await that with the... Well, when you got your Moz t-shirt, you wore that on Christmas Day, didn't you? So maybe you'll get a, yourself a new Google pin badge and, and wear that on Christmas Day this year. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much. We will be back in two weeks. I um, haven't asked Liz yet, but I think Liz is going to be my guest for next in two weeks' time because I want to talk about About Us pages and how to make a good one and photos are integral to that. So we will be back in two weeks' time. Thank you very much. Everybody have a lovely weekend. Wave, Simon Daly. Wave. I'm waving. I'm waving.